Hi, I'm Sam Hawley, coming to you from Gadigal Land. This is ABC News Daily. The court case involving Brittany Higgins and Bruce Lehrman was one of the most watched in history. Now, an inquiry has found a key legal figure in the proceedings was grossly unethical and misled the trial judge. Today, reporter Patrick Bell on how it came to this and what it means for our justice system. Patrick, not many of us know much about Shane Drumgold, so I want to talk to you about him and this rather extraordinary position he's found himself in. Sam, Shane Drumgold has spent the best part of five years as the ACT's Director of Public Prosecutions, and that really elevates you from uh, being an ordinary prosecutor. It's a pseudo-political role almost when you are tasked with heading up the Office of Public Prosecutions in any jurisdiction. After uh, the last little while, he will, of course, be best known for his role as the prosecutor in the very high-profile rape case brought by the former Liberal staffer Brittany Higgins against her colleague Bruce Lehrman. For the past three weeks, a dark cloud has hung over the halls of power. The Coalition Cabinet's been crippled by allegations of rape and sexism. Of course, Bruce Lehrman has always denied Uh, any wrongdoing. He maintains his innocence and uh, there are uh, no findings against him. Mm, All right, Patrick, to understand the position that Shane Drumgold finds himself in today, let's just step back. Remind me again about this case against Mr Learman. So the alleged incident is said to have occurred in March 2019. Brittany Higgins initially had some discussions with police but uh, then decided not to take the matter any further. But she reignited that investigation in early 2021 uh, when she had also disclosed the allegation in an interview to Samantha Maiden for a story on news.com.au and with Lisa Wilkinson for Network 10's The Project. And there was an enormous public reaction of many people will remember the equality marches on the lawns Mm -hmm. of Parliament House that Brittany Higgins addressed herself. You're all here today, not because we want to be here, but because we have to be here. The system is broken. But after many days of evidence in the subsequent trial that uh, took place in October last year, Uh, It emerged that a juror had brought material, research material into the jury room, which is a very clear breach of the rules. The actions of that one juror uh, led to a mistrial, uh, and initially there there were plans for a retrial, but uh, ultimately those plans were abandoned as well. Right, okay. So Bruce Learman, he was standing trial in the ACT Supreme Court. There was a mistrial and that was the end of it because the case was then abandoned. Yes, because uh, Shane Drumgold then uh, in December last year made a public statement in which he announced that he believed there was a significant and unacceptable risk to the life of Ms Higgins if there was a second trial. In light of the compelling independent medical opinion and balancing all factors, I've made the difficult decision that it is no longer in the public interest to pursue a prosecution at the risk of a complainant's life. Uh, So Mr Drumgold formed the view that a second trial just wasn't an option. Mm, And of course, Bruce Learman has never been found of any wrongdoing. That's right. Okay, so case closed, but then it's revealed that Shane Drumgold is pretty unhappy about how things have played out. That's right. And he takes the step of writing a letter to the ACT's chief police officer. In it, Shane Drumgold says... From first engagement, it has been clear that key AFP members have had a strong desire for this matter not to proceed to charge. 
Fundamentally, he's argued that there was pressure from police, including some senior police on the investigation, uh, not to pursue the case, that there wasn't enough evidence to charge Mr Lemon. He'd also been worried that the passion shown by the ACT police uh, to have uh, Mr Lemon acquitted meant there might have been some interference and that there might have been pressure on police to try and thwart the prosecution. Mr Drumgold called for a public inquiry. Ultimately, there was an inquiry, but not necessarily the one that he had expected. OK, and that inquiry was headed by the former Queensland judge, Walter Sofronov. Shane Drumgold takes to the stand. How did that play out? Um, I call Neville Shane Drumgold. I think a lot of us covering the inquiry were surprised at the direction that it took. I solemn, solemnly and sincere, sincerely declare and affirm that the evidence I will give will be the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Thank you. The first serious proposition that is put to Mr Drumgold in this hearing is that he has made a knowingly false statement Mm. to the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. Mr Drumgold, those statements were false I, and they were knowingly false. No, I don't accept that. No, I don't accept that they were false. And that is the moment when we all kind of twigged at maybe this inquiry is taking a a different Mm -hmm. direction to what we had all expected. Uh, And so this was in relation to the notes he had made of a meeting with Lisa Wilkinson. Ms Wilkinson raised that she was nominated for a Logie Award for her interview with Brittany Higgins and uh, said that she'd prepared a speech to deliver if she were to win that award. Okay, so hang on. This all relates to the notes of a meeting between Mr Drumgold and Lisa Wilkinson from Channel 10, where he says he told her ahead of a Logie's speech that she gave that any publicity could delay the trial. That's right. Ultimately, there were notes of that meeting that uh, were added to after the Logie's speech, but Shane Drumgold told the, the Chief Justice in court that they were made contemporaneously. They were all made at the time of the meeting and uh, uh, it was put to him that that wasn't true. And then we were simply saying that last bit that is not in there, we should add that bit. Yes. So that note was made on the preceding day. Yes, correct. Well, yes. Yes, I accept that. And therefore, the answer you gave to Her Honour was false. Oh, no, I don't accept that. I mean, And by the way, Lisa Wilkinson denies that she was ever warned about her Logie's speech. And then at one point during this week that Shane Drumgold's on the stand, he actually, Patrick, backs away completely from his interference allegations. It's extraordinary. My current view is that it was probably, having read all of the all of the police statements, it was most likely a skills deficit on the part of the investigators. It was extraordinary because on the Wednesday of this week, he had repeated those claims. And then when he was questioned by his own counsel the next day, he said he no longer suspected any political interference, that his views had changed after reading the police submissions. You would acknowledge that your suspicions about the existence of political interference to prevent the case properly going ahead were mistaken? I do accept that. Thank you. Yeah, Patrick, that brings us to this week. Let's chat now about what Walter Sofronoff has found, because to say his report is damning is really an understatement. He is scathing against Shane Drumgold. He is. Crucially, he has found uh, that Mr Drumgold, uh, in his view, knowingly lied to the Chief Justice uh, over the meeting with Ms Wilkinson. He's been accused of grossly unethical conduct. Now, this is around uh, some of the the issues over whether uh, he was right or not uh, to try and withhold a, a police report from being disclosed to Mr Lehrman's lawyers. That report was critical of Ms Higgins' uh, credibility and also raised some concerns about her mental health. 
there was some some quite extraordinary language in this report from Walter Sofronoff mm. accusing Shane Drumgold of treating criminal litigation like a poker game. This is uh, potentially going to have future consequences uh, for Shane Drumgold if uh, there is a view that he has attempted to pervert the course of justice by, uh, in effect, trying to withhold the disclosure of that material, which uh, would have potentially helped the defence case, uh, then that is a very serious finding indeed. And of course, Patrick, there's a very human toll to all of this, which we should remember. Shane Drumgold has now, of course, resigned. But the other really controversial thing about all of this is that the report itself was leaked to the press by Mr Sofronov and published before it was formally released by the ACT government. That's become a huge deal. It's emerged that uh, Mr Sofronov uh, gave a copy of this report to a journalist, which we believe is uh, Janet Albertson from The Australian, on the Sunday night before it had gone to the Chief Minister. And that is something that the ACT Chief Minister, Andrew Barr, has taken particular objection to and was asked about during an interview on 7.30 with Sarah Ferguson. Uh, I think it was unfortunate uh, that uh, the report was given Uh, to anyone. Uh, uh, Mr Sofronoff appeared to have formed a view that some journalists were more trustworthy than others. Mm, Okay, so this all sounds like a rather large shambles. It's not good for anyone involved. Just tell me, what's Mr Drumgold been saying and other parties in, in this? Mr Drumgold's uh, issued a lengthy statement in which he's disputed many of the adverse findings. Mm -hmm. There there is an argument that Shane Drumgold could go to court to try and have the findings uh, from this inquiry set aside. In the end, Patrick, this all goes to trust in the justice system, that we know that if we ever land up there, for whatever reason, our rights will be protected. So how can we be sure of that now? I think so much of this story has become about the personalities behind the scenes uh, and doesn't have a great deal to do with what did or didn't happen between two people uh, in Parliament House in March 2019. And so I think the hope uh, overall uh, after this inquiry is that uh, the focus of the criminal justice system in the ACT but in other jurisdictions as well Uh, returns to uh, its fundamental role of trying to achieve justice and that other discussion around uh, the the minutiae behind the scenes no longer takes centre stage. Patrick Bell is an ABC reporter based in Canberra. The ACT Chief Minister, Andrew Barr, has not ruled out seeking the advice of the Integrity Commission on whether Mr Sovranov broke the law by leaking his report to the press. If anything in this episode has raised issues for you, you can call 1800 RESPECT or Lifeline on 13 11 14. This episode was produced by Nell Whitehead, Lara Corrigan and Sam Dunn, who also did the mix. Our supervising producer is David Cody. I'm Sam Hawley. You can find all our episodes of the podcast on the ABC Listen app. Thanks for listening. Listener.